Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to present my progress report in front of all of you today. My thesis title is The Effect of Oral Contraceptives on Metabolic Balance. I am a sixth year medical student studying here at Semmelweis University, and I am also a PhD student uh, at the Department of Gynecology. My supervisors are Sabolch Varviro and Marton Kesthi, and my SMS is Isabel. My, our vision would be to seek out the best oral contraceptive for optimizing metabolic parameters, and our mission would be to identify a high-risk population and determine an optimal combination based on these metabolic parameters. Um, we have two specific goals, to investigate uh, the effects of oral contraceptives on carbohydrate and on lipid metabolism. My first project would be investigating the effect of contraceptives on carbohydrate metabolism. This would be a systematic review and meta-analysis. A short background, oral contraceptives are one of the most commonly used forms of con contraception. Over 70 million people use it globally. Um, it's so popular because uh, it's comfortable, it's effective, uh, with perfect use. So if taken consistently, um, the failure rate is below 1%. This 7% number takes into account occasional missed doses or other factors that can reduce effectiveness. Uh, it's also popular because of its non-contraceptive benefits. It can reduce acne and dysmenorrhea. Um, and as every drug, this also has uh, side effects. And besides its uh, well-known adverse effects, uh, it's suspected that uh, it can cause alterations in carbohydrate metabolism. So it could decrease glucose tolerance and increase insulin resistance. Um, these could be risk factors for type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease, um, but there are no conclusive guidelines in the matter, so we aim to assess the effect and safety of uh, these medications on carbohydrate metabolism. Our population would be oral contraceptive users. We would be doing a before and after comparison, so our intervention would be oral contraceptives and our outcomes would be the metabolic parameters connected to uh, carbohydrate metabolism, so fasting glucose, fasting insulin, um, would include a glucose to tolerance test, um, ideally at uh, 30, 60 and 120 minute marks, it's quite important, and uh, the area under the curve for uh, the test mentioned before. Uh, our hypothesis is that oral contraceptive combination could worsen metabolic parameters. Uh, so our clinical question in the matter would be, this, does the use of oral contraceptives have a negative impact on carbohydrate metabolism in women when comparing before and after usage? Um, because of lack of time, I only brought one key article. Uh, the population examines healthy women using oral contraceptives. Uh, the intervention is uh, quite the same, so it compares two kinds of combination oral contraceptives. Um, its uh, strengths include that it has a six and a 12 month follow-up as well, and uh, they perform this uh, oral glucose to tolerance test uh, and had the data, the parameters at uh, these time frames as well, which is quite important. Uh, a small annotation that the num number of participants were around 50, which usually the RCTs in the matter um, have a population between uh, this number. So we, we did our systematic search in uh, Medline, Embase, and Central. We had 15,086 hits. Uh, our search key contained two domains. Um, one domain, we looked at the outcomes and the 
other the interventions. Um, we managed to finish the title and abstract selection. Um, so after the duplicate removal, we had 12,244 articles, and uh, now we have 542 articles waiting for the full text selection, which we have started. My second topic is quite similar. It investigates uh, lipid metabolism uh, in oral contraceptives. Um, it's also suspected that uh, these uh, drugs can alter lipid metabolism negatively, so they can increase uh, triglycerides, increase LDL, and decrease HDL, which are risk factors for coronary heart disease. Um, we aim to assess the, the effects and safety of uh, these medications on lipid metabolism. Our uh, PICO and clinical question is also quite similar. Our outcomes are a bit different because we investigate lipid uh, parameters here, so we would look at LDL, triglycerides, HDL, and to total cholesterol. And our, our clinical implications um, could be also said on our first project, so we would like to achieve a more optimized, higher level of patient care through the selection of uh, the right kind of medication. To summarize, um, my two projects are going to investigate metabolism connected to the use of oral contraceptives. Um, the first project is going to examine carbohydrate metabolism and the second project is going to examine uh, lipid metabolism. And uh, for my quote, as Kobe Bryant said, if you're afraid to fail, then you're probably going to fail. And uh, thank you for your attention. First, I would like to congratulate you on your uh, great presentation. And you mentioned that oral glucose tolerance tests are very important and crucial. And why would you like to examine those and also this fasting blood glucose? Yes, uh, yeah, thank you for your question. I wanted to uh, elaborate a bit more on the glucose to tolerance test. While the fasting uh, glucose uh, describes a blood glucose uh, statically. Um, a, a tolerance test can uh, describe it dynamically, which uh, could give us more uh, detailed information. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question would be related to both of them, actually. Both uh, glucose tolerance and lipid profile have many confounders like age, um, weight, etc. Do you think you will could a subgroup for those parameters, or how, how would you deal with them? Yes, for sure. Um, we talked about doing subgroups. That's actually part of our plans. Um, we will probably do subgroups in uh, a different, uh, um, with traits of different metabolic parameters. For example, uh, BMI, or diabetics, or um, PCOS, or that's in our plans as well, yes. Yes, that's a very, very good point, Jakub. Uh, but I, I would guess that in these papers you can also find uh, adjusted analysis. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Yeah. So um, these multivariate analysis should be adjusted for at least age, but probably mm -hmm. for yes. other covariants as well. Yes, so is. maybe you can pull the adjusted odds ratios and uh, you don't necessarily uh, have to make uh, other subgroups mm -hmm. because these are already adjusted for age, for mm -hmm. example. Okay, thank you. And uh, you mentioned, thank you, uh, congratulations for your presentation. <laughs> thank so you. you mentioned you wanted, you want to uh, examine high risk populations. What did you exactly mean by that? Oh, yes, uh, that is also connected to Jakub's yeah, question. Yeah. Um, high risk population would be kind of these subgroups, for example, to examine a population above a certain BMI that is in a higher risk of these alterations and uh, these me metabolic parameters. I would like to ask for your first topic. Do you have any cutoff time? So how long have they been, how long 
you have been taking oral contraceptives or uh, you won't, uh, won't uh, um, care about that? Yes, because thank you for your question. Um, you. We don't have an exact cutoff time, but we would measure the parameters at baseline. And usually the articles that I found or that we found have uh, measurements at three months, six months, 12 months, some at 24 months. And that's about the latest that we would want to include.